Marie Antoinette with Posh Paper Perfection, and welcome to my channel. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be sharing with you this Jingle All The Way card. This card was made with the Spellbinders Shopping Cart Holiday and Presents. It is from the Add to Cart collection by Becky Roberts and I want to thank Spellbinders so much for sending me these dies. They were super fun and I think you're going to love making your cards with these dies. Now I included another die set in with this card. That is the Jingle Word Frame Etch Dies from the Holiday Medley Collection by Becca Feacon. Love this word die so much. Now let me show you the papers that I used to create this cute card. Spellbinders sent me the Christmas Traditions paper pad. It is a six by six pad. If you haven't seen my video on that, click on the card here. It's only a two minute video and I walk you through what I absolutely love about it. I also use paper from the Cardstock Warehouse Paper Company and not shown in here is the gold foil that I use from Anna Griffin and a brown cardstock for the tree trunk. All the materials that I use will be listed in the description. Now what you're seeing here is the shopping cart holiday and presents dies. What I love about this die set is not only do you get the Christmas tree and the mini light bulbs and the string, but you also get the presents and a box lid and bow for the presents. Not many dies I've seen actually have the lid. Um, they usually just have the box and a bow. I went ahead and cut out two layers for the Christmas tree and I put it together with my Barely Arts glue. And that's because I like to have dimension and it not to look so flat on my uh, cardstock. For the Christmas presents, I did the box one color and then the lid a solid color. The box, it was taken from the tr Christmas Traditions paper pad and I thought that the uh, lids would look good in gold and in the azalea pink and they en ended up being really adorable. I also cut out my um, bows in the azalea pink and in the gold, just trying to color coordinate those uh, colors with the packages. Um, as you can see, the little brown is the tree stump. I almost forgot to do that. There is one die in there that I'm still unsure what it is, and you won't ever see me use it. Um, I need to reach out to Spellbinders to ask them what exactly that die is, um, but uh, all the other ones I end up using. Now, with all of the die cuts, I ended up um, taking a white piece of paper and cutting out duplicates and then pasting them just because, again, I like my uh, papers to be thicker. And, um, and then you'll see that I've also cut out the light bulbs in pink, in the crystal white, and then, and then the fairway green. These are all Cardstock Warehouse Paper Company papers. They are 105 pounds. One thing about the 105 pounds is that the smaller the die cut intricate is, that um, the harder it is to cut it with the Empress Mini. I just want everyone to know that um, when we get to cutting the sentiment out, um, I actually did have to use my regular die machine in addition, but I'll share with you the benefits of doing that a, a little bit later. So the light bulbs, I end up cutting two of each of the three colors, the pink, the green, and the crystal white. And then you'll notice that um, the light bulb string, I end up cutting five times, but actually I cut it six times. 
So, um, yeah, and you'll see that when I was putting it together, how all of a sudden I decided, oh, I don't have enough. <laughs> so here I am. I am gluing the white die cuts onto the colored pieces on the back. It just gives it a little sturdiness and a little bit more 3D dimension. One trick that I have to say is when you use white cardstock, you might want to color the uh, outside of it. Um, the reason why I do that is I do not like to have a colored cardstock and then the white show. It just annoys the heck out of me. Now with the gold foil, that's a little bit harder to do unless you have a gold uh, Posca pen or something like that. But um, I usually don't bother with the metallics. And now I'm adhering the box lid on top of the box. Now the box lid will be bigger than the box. What I like about using the Barely Arts glue is that it stays wet enough to kind of figure out where it is in the middle. Now I'm assembling my bow and I'm taking my boning folder and I'm curling the bow. I like to have it a little bit round so it has a more realistic effect. And so I'm doing that with all of the bows that I've cut out, as you can see. And then after I do that, then I will start gluing them together. Now there's two different kinds of bows. There's just a bow and then the little um, uh, knot that you glue on top. And then they have the bigger fuller bow. For the fuller bow, you'll want to cut out four of those bigger bows. Um, and then you want to make sure that you have a knot um, because the knot goes on top and that's what it makes it look seamless. Okay, so then uh, with the smaller bow, as you can see, I'm gluing it on top of the box, and then I already have the knot glued on there, and then with the bigger uh, bow, this is the way that I assemble it, and you kind of just have to offset it, um, and again, the glue is wet enough where you can kind of just move it around and figure out. Now my bow was not perfect. One of the pieces of the bow was a little bit bigger, but it still looked cute. Because it's not about perfection. It's about creating something and the person who's going to get your card is not going to really look at it um, with a magnifying glass. So, um, so anyway, um, I had a lot of fun. I'm gonna make a lot more of these bows just to have in the future. Um, to connect them with and I can think of so many different projects to use these bows with So you can use it with um, the bottom uh, Piece, but I did not use it with the bottom piece at all. Okay now um, you can see that I used a round uh, foam adhesive and I put that on the box and then the bigger bow on top and um with the little one, I did not do that. Uh, I, d I felt like I didn't really need that added dimension. Okay, so now that I have all of my presents and my Christmas tree, what I'm doing right here is I'm staging. I always do this. It's just me trying to figure out what I like on my card, how is it all going to fit, and then once I have that, then I'll start adding um, other things. Now, I felt like I needed something more in there, so I created one of the boxes um, vertically, and uh, I ended up taking one of the box tops and just cutting it out a little bit bigger and making a tall skinny box, and it seemed to work out perfectly. But still, the tree kind of looked kind of funny. And then I realized, you know, it is a small tree. And that box is humongous in the proportions. So I really needed to make the boxes seem like they were closer to me and the tree was farther away, if that makes any sense. So I started adding uh, foam adhesive to the back 
to give that illusion of the trees being far away. Now before we go on, I do want to talk about the mat that I'm using. That is Crystal White from Cardstock Warehouse Paper Company. And I use a Doris Snowflake embossing folder. And you'll see what that ends up looking like. I really wish I could tell you exactly what it's called, but I don't remember. I've owned it forever. If I can find it on Amazon, I'll throw it in the description below. So this is what it looks like when it is embossed. What you also saw was the foam tape that I use. Really great deal. $7.99 and you get five rolls of it. So now I'm just putting it together. Because I'm using foam adhesive, I'm trying to be very careful that this card is not too thick. I love fat cards, but this one, I didn't want to go more than three layers of foam adhesive. So that first present, I did not put foam adhesive on the back of it. I just glued it onto the card itself. Then I use foam adhesive on the, the small uh, rectangular a piece and um, and you can see that I'm still trying to figure out you know how to put the foam adhesive on the back and still fit the tree in there slide the tree in there so um, I did end up taking it off a couple of times because the tree was you know a little bit too high up but it ended up being okay now I'm adding foam adhesive to the other small present with the pink bow and that looks so adorable you can see how thick it is on to creating the light bulbs and decorating the tree so the light bulbs i went ahead and i used my twee marker and that's from arteza this is noir black and i went ahead and just you know, colored the t tips of them to give the illusion that they were um, the, uh, the the part of the bulb that you screw on and it end up being really, really cute. Now, I probably would do this um, next time with a fine Sharpie or extra fine Sharpie. And the reason is, is that extra fine Sharpie is not going to um, uh, end up bleeding everywhere and my twee marker although I love it um, it did smear on to some of the light bulbs <laughs> so that was a little bit uh, disappointing but um, definitely with a sharpie would be great now I'm taking that ribbon and I'm basically putting it on the tree and then kind of just trimming it uh, as close to the tree as possible. Sometimes you see me actually flip the Christmas tree um, right side down because uh, what I'm doing is I'm looking at it from the back side and I found, found that it was easier to cut it. One thing you can't see is how exactly I am trimming this garland. So the garland is a little bit rounded and I found that when I cut the ends off, I had to actually do a little curvature on it um, just to make it look real. Because if I cut it straight, then it really doesn't look good. But you can always layer another garland straight on top of it and nobody would notice it. Again, this is a labor of love and nobody that you're going to give the card to is actually going to look at it and go, oh, you know, that's not really perfect. You can see I'm doing that little curvature there. And uh, so anyway, this is the way that I put my garland. And you'll find that um, I start adding garland up to the very tippy top of that. Um, just because I didn't really know exactly how I wanted this. Uh, so when I was decorating my tree, I did one major boo-boo <laughs> and that was, I decorated the tree from top to bottom. I do that with a real tree and, hmm, well, all I can say is 
if I can do this all over again and the next time I do create it again I will be adding my bulbs from the bottom to the top the reason why is I clustered a lot of bulbs up on top uh, and it looked really mm, scrunched now some people say oh but I love that but uh, part of me kind of, you know, was afraid that there was going to be too many gaps and it ended up being a little bit chaotic, in my opinion. But, uh, but anyway, uh, it's also easier to do it on the bottom and then on the top, especially if you're going to use the tween markers, because that's where I ran into the problems with the glue kind of smearing all over the place. <laughs> So again, it was trial and error. So it wasn't like I saw a video tutorial on how to put these things together. I am putting the uh, light bulbs directly on the garland. And I went ahead and glued the whole entire um, uh, light bulb on there. So if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe. <laughs> Uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it because I really had a great, a great time doing um, this card. So now I'm going to put the, the uh, star, but as you can see, I just wanted one more garland in there. And that's where that six garland piece is coming from. And then I just added a little bit more um, bulbs on there. But you really don't need to add more. Um, again, when you're cutting the bulbs, make sure you cut uh, two times for um, each of the three colors if you end up using three colors. Okay. What I really love about this Christmas tree is all the things you can do with it. Oh my gosh, you can make a blue tree with copper bulbs, a white tree with just gold, you know, kind of like a, a tone on tone. So, so pretty. So now I'm doing the final staging and making sure that Christmas tree fits in there before I glue it down. And I like it. I think that it looks great. So I'm gonna take some Barely Arts glue and start gluing the back of it and then put it on top. Spellbinders also sent me the Jingle Word Frame etched dies. Now these dies, if you're going to use the Empress Mini, know that you're going to actually have to use another die cutting machine to actually cut them out cleanly. It's either that or the paper. I'm not really sure, but I had to um, cut it out with the Empress Mini. Luckily, it stayed on, uh, the die stayed with the paper, and when I transferred it onto my die um, cutting machine that doesn't have a magnet, it was able to cut it without moving it. Then I cut it out uh, twice and glued it together, as you can see, and then I went ahead and glued it to the card. The reason why I did that is because I wanted the sentiment to have and more dimension and I couldn't put foam adhesive on the back and I think it turned out just fabulous. Once this mat was put together then I went ahead and put some double-sided adhesive on the backing and adhered it to a four and a quarter by five and a half A2 card base. I think this card turned out so adorable. Now before you go I do want to give you a little teaser Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to share with you how I created this card and this is with also a Add to Cart Collection die by Becky Roberts. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.